Good morning. I don't think I'm actually live yet. Just give it a minute. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Uh, whatever time of day it is that you hear this message, I pray that your mind, your heart, and your spirit are all poised to receive, to accept, and to act upon words of wisdom. Hashem. So, I remember years ago when I was pretty new to Orisha devo Devotion. Um, I remember having a really pivotal conversation with my mother and she asked me um, if I was going to heaven. And I remember uh, how it clicked for me in that moment that, you know, as my, my parent, Particularly, I, I think as my mother, she was concerned that she was looking out for me and that she could say with relative certainty that um, I was making a, a decision that would not contradict her mission, right, which is to nurture and protect, you know, me as her child, you know, and so she says, are you going to heaven? Is this, this does this Ifa, uh, get you to heaven? And um, I, I said, well, you know, that's that's not really the objective, right? I I understand your question, but that isn't what we're really aspiring to. That you know, uh, Christians want to go to heaven. Christians are always trying to make sure that they're, you know, measuring the balance uh, between their sin and their redemption, I suppose, so that they can have some level of certainty that should it all go down today, they're going to make it to heaven, right? That's the, the ongoing calculus of Christianity. So, yeah, well, we don't think that way as Orisha devotees. It's, it's not a constant one a battle or wonder or curiosity or anxiety about whether or not this action or that action is going to get me closer to heaven. And um, so it, it brings into mind the significance of, you know, your your religious practices uh, have within them certain assumptions and certain goals. They promise certain things. Each religion makes its own set of promises. Okay, they 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 promise that if you practice their tradition, then you will get purification or you'll get. Um, to nirvana or you'll be seated at the right hand of the almighty or you'll be in paradise with i don't know you know 1000 virgins or or something you know what i mean like each each one has its own promise and there may be some overlap and, and i'm oversimplifying it of course just to drive home a simple understanding that you already know it's part of the reasons that you know, religions are different from one another is that they promote something different. They have a different set of values. Each of them has a different set of values, right? And, and those values are based on what that religion promises its practitioners, all right? And so um, today, what I want to do is I want to sort of continue a conversation that I started with um, with folks when I was in Nigeria recently. And it was around consistency, you know, and that conversation was really looking at how important it is for different dimensions of your practice to be consistent. Right? And so I actually gave an example. You, you may want to be a devotee of Jesus. You may want to worship Jesus, but you like the practice and the, and the vibe of Islam. Uh You've chosen something that's contradictory, right? You've chosen a system that doesn't really help you pursue the practices that in the area of study that you're into. Similarly, uh, we're talking about now consistency between uh, the desired spiritual outcomes and the practice that you have chosen, right? So ever so often, I meet somebody who really enjoys being a Christian, they like Christianity. They like the teachings of Christianity. They like, they like the fellowship and the camaraderie that they get from Christianity. Um, they like some of the ethos, right? Things of like brotherly love and, and love your neighbor as yourself. And they like those.
teachings of Christianity. Uh, they just don't like the colonial legacy of Christianity. They don't like the ways in which Christianity is embedded into, you know, white supremacism, things like that. They don't like the way in which, you know, when they do the historical record, this is about other people's lineage and about other people's traditions. And not only Christians, I've met people who were Buddhists, I've met people who were really deep into yoga or into natural medicine or people who were even scientific, right? People who were really into biology and chemistry and evolution and stuff like that. But at a certain point within each of these kinds of uh, disciplines and traditions, they, they don't find themselves represented. Right, so the scientist gets to a certain point where it's like, yeah, I like the data and I like the way we approach the data, but ah, uh, this, the future of this, where this is going, do I see myself and my children and my children's children, do I see us all flourishing in in this scientific community eternally? No, I don't see it. I'm, I'm not. I wouldn't want my children to be brought up in this. Right? I just like the data, or people who are Buddhist. Same thing, right? I've, I've worked with folks who come from a lot of different disciplines, astrology um, as well, and, and they're drawn to a original lifestyle because they can see themselves. They This is consistent with their values. This is consistent with their culture, right? This is, this is consistent with their, you know, the ways of their community. Right, they can see themselves in it. They can feel um, familiarity in the practice of Orisha lifestyle. It resonates with them, right? And so um, they have this dilemma, wherein they they feel comfortable with an Orisha lifestyle, but they still like the goals of Christianity. They still like the the vision. And the perspective and the and the um, sort of the um, the desired outcomes of Hinduism, right? And and so then they there's that dilemma and they, and, they, and and it's, it's a, a battle to try to figure out how do I bring those values or those beliefs and those attributes from other traditions that I'm familiar with? How do I how do I satisfy those through uh, Orisha lifestyle? Okay. Now sometimes. You can and sometimes you can't. That's the simple answer. Right? Sometimes there are elements of different traditions that are just they irreconcilable. For example, when people are, are in the in the Orisha tradition for years and, and they're still trying to figure out ways to get out of sacrifice. They just they just can't accept making sacrifice. Uh, particularly sac animal sacrifice, right? And they just can't seem to get their their, their mind beyond that. Well, you know, that's something to consider. It, it, this may not be the tradition for you, right? Uh, I, I, yeah, <laughs> this may not be the one to be, it may not be the tradition for you. You want to be a Christian and you don't want to read the Bible or you don't want to reference the Bible, uh, it's going to be hard for you to practice, right? You want to be an Orisha devotee and you don't want to practice divination, you don't want to practice sacrifice, uh, it's going to be hard, right? And so, um, Although you may find yourself uh, at different levels of that of that dilemma or that power battle between, you know, your values being consistent with the tradition that you practice, but there's one thing that I really want to drive home that I know after having worked with the community for you know, a couple of decades now. There's one thing that I can tell you that I know that you're after. You may not have thought about it. You may not really have articulated it as such, but I want to help you, you know, uh, make this connection so that you can resolve the dilemma, you know, at whatever level it is. Here's what you're looking for when you come to Orisha. Here's what you're coming from, coming what you're looking for when you come to any religion, actually. You're looking for identity. That's what you want, is identity. Because you can have a degree from the most prestigious university, your, your passport can be, you know, whatever, United States, 
you might be married, you might have children, you might uh, have any kind of title. There are all different things that you could be involved in, and, th and they all will give you some traces of your identity, right? They'll, get, they'll talk about traces. They'll reveal traces of your identity or, or particular strands in your identity. But your religion is crucial because it explains your existence. It talks about your creation relative to all creation. So even if your passport says United States of America and that means you have entree to all anywhere in the world, when it comes to your mortal soul, you're not going to be referring to your passport. <laughs> you know, you're not going to be looking at your blood type, and you, whether or not you're a Democrat or a Republican. It, those those identifiers are just they don't even compare to the identity of your soul, who you are relative to your, relative to your ancestors, who you are relative to Olodumar, the creator, right? You only get those kinds of really, really, really definitive, big picture uh, um, answers to, you know, the question of who am I? That only comes through religion. That only comes through religion, right? Now, philosophers like to, you know, talk about it, but they're... They're, they are going to refer back to some religious source for all of their philosophies as well, right? So at some point, humanity, uh, we have an innate understanding of divinity. We have an innate uh, recognition of a, a greater power, you know? We know it. We just know that there is a, a creator. We know that... that as infinitely complex as it can be and the, all the calculations that we can do and we can get as scientific about it as we want but we also know that at the source of it the thing that created all that complexity is something magnificent okay so anyway when you go to religion part of what you're seeking the really most essential part of what you're seeking through religion is your identity who am I how did I get here why am I here all that's going to be coming. All that's going to be given to you through uh, religion, and um, in the best case scenario, your religion will reinforce your identity as an African man, as an African woman. Your your religion will reaffirm those intuitive, those instinctive, natural. Um, forms of of being, right? Some of them that just come out of you biologically, right? You move a certain way, you know. It's it's just it's just interesting. When you go to Africa, when I go to Africa, one of the things that just always moves me is just the the movement of the people, the way people move physically, the way they're the the rhythm and the and the you know what I mean, just the the. And it's because of the way their their bodies are built, the physiology, right? That that are consistent with people who are familiar to me, other black people. You know, it's just it just makes sense. I know that movement. I know those gestures. I know that tone of voice. I know those facial expressions. Like that is that is what natural to me. You know, just being there. And so it's the same kind of of familiarity that comes out of practicing African religion and spiritual traditions. It's just natural to us because we are a part of a legacy and a continuation of, of African identity that it's, that's, you know, it, it goes on, it's unbroken, right? You're born into it. There's a tone of voice and a cadence and the rhythm that your mother spoke with and other people spoke with while you were in embryo, okay? And then you come into the world and all of that, it continues. The environment changes. You know, obviously time moves on. And the way it happens today is, is can be radically different from how it happened 200 years ago. But it's a continuum. Right? It really is unbroken. So, when you get into African religion and spirituality and the drums are being played and the songs and the chants are being, you know, just belted out, there's a part of your 
your we could just call it your ancestral memory is what I refer to it as that just is awakened and you can sigh with relief to say yeah yeah that's where I belong right so you're looking for that okay you're looking for that that is part of what we need as people okay and and definitely part of what we need as African people in the diaspora because we live in an environment that for the most part is quite hostile towards us it, it uh, is constantly working against us and we have a you know a, a dicey relationship with mainstream America right and then the world at large is challenging for us and so we to be able to have a religious experience that reaffirms our identity in such a natural organic way is especially important and so um, whether or not you practice Christianity or Islam or or, or you're, you're, you're uh, a yogi or you know all these other things that you may really deep, be deeply into okay I can't I can't say um, one way or the other that all of us should practice one religion or another right uh, and I cannot say that even the people who have started to introduce themselves to Orisha lifestyle I can't say that everybody who comes in the door is meant to stay right that that is also true but I can say with absolute certainty that all Africans in diaspora will be well served you will be fulfilled and and, and nourished by having a healthy relationship with African religion and spirituality partially because of what I was alluding to before about you know it just resonates with our expression it it, it, it fulfills our identity on a really deep level in, in ways that are difficult to really really nail down and articulate in, in simple terms but when you feel it you know it you know you just know it this is where I belong this resonates with me on a on a precognitive level I, I, I can't even really say what it is I just feel it and I know that this is for me all of us deserve that we all deserve to have a healthy relationship with that level of identity we should all be comfortable in Orisha settings when people are talking about Vodun or Voodoo or any form of African spirituality there, there has to be a part of us that embraces it and says yes that's my culture that's my tradition I am a part of that I don't do it at this level or I don't do it like that but I claim it as as my own and I allow it to claim me so when the drums play I move I sing I play along I allow the culture to, to, to claim me when I feel it I, I yield and I get involved and I participate fully um, I think yesterday I saw a, a video clip in Nigeria of this uh, he looked like a Catholic priest right he looked like a Catholic priest he had this white um, robe on you know with the big giant lapels and everything and rope around his neck and everything he was Christian he was some form of Christian and it was a public event in Nigeria um, and the, the Bata drums came out and you know the, the Bata all the Yoruba drums talk and so when they're talking, they're reciting different oriki, praise poetry. And they're doing, they're, they're reciting praise poetry for the drum and the spirit of the drum itself. They're praising the deities, they're praising the Lodumari, they're praising the, the people in front of them. If it's a dignitary or a visitor, the, the drums speak and they say in, in, in this formulaic way, different praise for some subject or another. So this priest is sitting down and the drum starts talking and you can see the priest knows the language and he starts, you know, playing back and forth, right? Which was cool. It was like, oh yeah, it's good. He's a, he's a Catholic priest, but he still is, you know, aware. He remembers and he's willing to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, now you're going to say this and this and that and that, you know? And then it got to a point where the drum told him to get up. And he got up and, I mean, he started to really dance. He was stepping. 
It was really beautiful to see. Everybody started to cheer and to applaud, right? Because even though he's a priest and he's recognized and he's demonstrating himself as a Christian priest, he can't deny the fact that he's a Yoruba. He has a heritage. He has a source. He has a, a lineage. And that all is rooted in a certain tradition. There's no reason to deny your source because of your religion or because of your your political orientation or because of, you know, anything, as a matter of fact. There's nothing that should prevent you from, you know, resonating with your true identity on the deepest level. The elders have a proverb that says, no matter how long a log rests in the river, it will never become a crocodile. And so long, so it is. You could be in Spain, you could be in the United States, you could be in Jamaica, you could be in Brazil for hundreds and hundreds of years. That doesn't change who you are. It doesn't change where you come from. It doesn't change what you brought into the world and how you're going to show up. So be true to yourself. Acknowledge and recognize your identity with the knowledge that and the understanding that identity is destiny. Okay, and so who you are is what you will manifest. And all of those are consistent with what your ancestors have passed down, what divinities have sanctioned, what Olodumare created for all of us to fulfill in the very first place at all. And so um, in the School of Orisha Studies and the Orisha Lifestyle Academy, through my books and publications, through all of the services that I offer, if it's through the blog, if it's through the videos here on YouTube, um, if it's through interacting with folks on other social media platforms, the goal is always the same. The goal for the Orisha Lifestyle Academy and the School of Orisha Studies is to, you know, help rescue for modern Africans the virtues of Orisha lifestyle, the virtues of traditional living, the virtues of original thought and original ways of being that were created in the time of our forefathers and our foremothers and created with the purpose to guide us and to give us uh, the tools to influence and create a world that's consistent with our values, that's consistent with you know, our purpose as a people. And so um, I'm always, always, always using these different uh, media to uh, communicate with the, the people who want to have a positive influence on the world, the people who want to really be at home within themselves, who, who want to find their identity and define who they are according to the original blueprint and the, and the first intent and the original thought of the Creator and our ancestors. So I invite you to uh, visit orishalifestyle.com peruse all the offerings subscribe you know submit your email and you'll get ongoing educational materials through your email subscribe to the youtube channel and every time there's an update you know you'll get that and and you know and, and let's just start accumulating the kinds of knowledge and understanding that will allow you to live the medicine that will heal your life and heal the lives of those who you are destined to serve thank you for uh, your time and i look forward to meeting you and talking soon. Bye for now.